Thank you for joining us at the Greater Portmore Open Bible Church, where the gospel and friendship meet. This morning, our moderator is our Elder Brown. I'm going to ask him at this time to come to us. God bless you as you continue to lift up the service to the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise your name, Jesus. Thank you, Elder Marlene Williams. Good morning, church. Good morning, those who have joined us online. It's good to see my sister walking into the house this morning. Glory to God. God has been a good God. Hallelujah. This morning is Mission Sunday. It has been dedicated every third Sunday. Greater Portmore Open Bible and throughout the OBCS churches of Jamaica as Mission Sunday. And today we have a mission to carry out. Um, in the absence of our pastor this morning, we is on an assignment, but the Lord is here with us to accompany us and take us through whatever we have to go through. Put your hands together for the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. We must also be reminded and that we continue to keep our pastor in our prayers because at times he has different assignment to do and he needs our prayer. We all need one another prayer. Amen? Amen. This is a time of prayer, intercessory prayer. A time it's not about me, I'm just saying the words, but it's the Holy Spirit that is going to take the prayer unto Jesus Christ. And then we will see the manifestation of what we ask for as we pray within his will. May I invite the church, for those who are able to stand, to please stand in the presence of the Lord. Draw me close to you. Never let me go. Praise God. Lord, 
our God, our Father, our Master, the one that paid the price for our sins with his precious blood. There could be nothing else to pay the price for our sins, O oh God. And though our sin was as dark as midnight, your precious blood has washed it away, had cleaned it, had purified. Lord, we want to lift you up this morning. We want to elevate you. We want to give you praise. We want to honor you. There is none like you, Lord Jesus. We search all over. We look high and low. We look east, west, north, and south. But we couldn't find anybody like you. None to measure up to you. None to compare to you. You are God all by yourself. You are holy and you are righteous. You stand the supreme and you are sovereign over all things. Therefore, as we come into your presence, Lord God, we bow with humbleness of heart in humility of an holy and righteous God. And we say thank you, Lord, for cleansing us as we have come before your presence to let you know that we will confess our faults before you because we are not righteous. But through your son, Jesus Christ, which you have sent, and by his righteousness, we are made whole. Lord, O oh God, it's another Mission Sunday where we come, O oh God, to intercede, to make our request be made known unto you as you said. And Lord, O oh God, we want to present our family, Lord God, before you. Lord, we see what is happening. Father is killing wife. Father is killing father-in-law. Father and mother cannot agree. Oh God, we know it is not your spirit. Because Lord, oh God, you have called them, the man into the Garden of Eden, and you put a woman with him, and they become wife and husband. And by that, oh God, the human productivity line had begun. But the enemy came in with a lie to disrupt the process. But Lord, we call upon you this morning that you will restore, O oh God, that what we have lost in the Garden of Eden, that you went back into the Garden of Gethsemane, that it shall be restored to us. Therefore, Lord, whatever the situation is affecting our families, Oh God, we know that the restorer is in the garden of Gethsemane. Therefore, Lord, oh God, we open our mouths and our hearts and we give you thanks each day because, Lord God, persecution we must face, oh God. And therefore, when we face persecution, we know that you are still there with us. Therefore, Lord, we have a hope and we have a hope in you, King Jesus, Knowing that in spite of separation, and you separate not God, but you bring family together in unity, in love, and in the bond of peace. And therefore, Lord, we are looking forward to that which has been separated to be drawn back together so that there can be a unity in the family. Unity by extension to the family of God, the church believers, the call out, those who have believed you and have accepted you and has become a part of the family of Abraham. You are our Father. Therefore, Lord, we pray that you keep us together in unity, in love, and in the bond of peace. Always caring, always sharing with one another. Considering each other better than ourselves, O oh God. 
Help us by your Holy Spirit that we continue to consider others, to care about others even more than we care about ourselves. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we have just been through an election period. And Lord, we want to put this nation before you, a nation of many godly people, in spite of the criticism of the churches by the enemy, in spite of the work of the enemy. We said, let God arise in this nation. Let God arise in his people and let his enemies be scattered. Let them flee many ways. Oh God Almighty Father, Lord, we see, oh God, by our prayers, we have been asking, oh God, for something, oh God, that we would look after the poor, the alt, the indigent, and the, 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 the age. Lord, oh God, we have seen, oh God, where we were told on many occasions, years upon years, oh God, to burn our belly, to tighten our grip, oh God, because there would have been some increase. But Lord, we thank you this morning for our prayers that you have answered, oh God, that the retirees, oh God, are benefiting, oh God, that the students are benefiting. And we are not here this morning to elevate any politicians, oh God. But Lord, we are here to give you thanks this morning. Lord, oh God, Almighty Father, even though the murder rate has gone down, it is one too much when we have lost a life. Therefore, Lord, we pray for an intervention, oh God, Almighty Father. We pray, oh God, that you walk this land, oh God, through your people. Lord God, we know you have done three and a half years ministry on this earth already, and you are depending on your foot soldier, O oh God Almighty Father, to walk this land of Jamaica, to bring peace and unity among your people. Lord, lead us, Heavenly Father, lead us. Guide us, guard us, keep us, feed us, for we have no one else but you. We are depending on you, Christ Jesus. Fill us, O oh Holy Spirit, and take us wherever you want to take us. Because, O oh God, you said in Romans 12, 1 or 2, that we should make ourselves a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto you, ready to do your work. Lord, we thank you. Lord, you have given OBCS an association to be run by godly men and women that you have called. It is a challenging time. God, we lift up each and every one, each and every one, of these members of this association. We pray, O oh God, that you will anoint them. That, Lord, O oh God, that every decision they make to govern OBCS of Jamaica, that they will seek your counsel, that they will seek your guidance, that pride will not supersede, but will be your Holy Spirit that will lead us into all things. We pray, O oh God, against sickness, ill health, O oh God Almighty Father. We pray, O oh God, that you will fill their hearts and their mouths with words, words to guide us throughout this time, especially in this period. Lord, we pray a blessing upon each one of them. We pray for a fresh anointing, and we pray, O oh God, wherever you have assigned them to, Lord God Almighty Father, that they will be accompanied by your Holy Spirit. Lord, we thank you for them. And we pray, O oh God, that they will continue to lead and to guide and to teach us according to your will. Lord, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for your people who has made a special effort to be in your house this morning. As you said, we should not forsake the assembling of ourselves together, and they have been obedient unto you. Therefore, Lord, I pray for a special touch upon your people this morning as we come to gather together to worship in unity and in love. We pray, O oh God, that we'll be led by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, Lord, we lift up everything this morning to you. Every aspect of the church this morning we give unto you. And Lord, we said, have thine own way in us this morning as we give you thanks. 
In Jesus' precious name I pray. And let the church say amen and amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Church, did you know that singing and dancing is an integral part of our church worship? Yes. Ecclesiastic chapter 3, we were told by the wisest man, Solomon, as we go through about 14 pairs of opposite expression that is found in that chapter. In verse 4, he said there is a time to dance. But do you believe before we dance, Jesus did dance? Do you believe that Jesus can dance? Okay. The scripture tells us that in Luke chapter 15, that when he, was, he found the silver coin, he did rejoice. When he go and found the sheep that was lost, before he called the angels of heaven, he did rejoice. But when his son returned, and the eldest son was in the field and came home, when the eldest son heard the sound, he said the son heard the sound that when he asked what was happening, someone told him that music was being played and they were dancing and rejoicing. Well, let me tell you something. Do you believe that Jesus can sing? Do you believe that God can sing? Yes, God can sing. In Zephaniah 317b, God says he will sing for you because you have returned to him. This morning, we want to sing, we want to dance in worship and to give God praise. It's given me great pleasure to invite the praise and worship team at this time to come and lead us in a time of praise and worship. Church, may I invite you to stand this morning and give God your all this morning in singing and dancing and praising of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Let's give the Lord some worship, church. Hallelujah. Father, we honor your name this morning. Father, we bless your name this morning. Father, we declare that you are worthy of it all. And there is none like unto you this morning. Glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, doing wonders. There is none like unto our God. And we welcome you in our midst. Hallelujah. Church, are we ready to bless the Lord with our worship? Hallelujah. Not to be blessed by the worship, but for us to bless the Lord with our worship. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Welcome into this place. Well
in this place. You know, he doesn't go anywhere without welcome. We're speaking to our fathers. Welcome into this broken vessel. You desire to abide in the praises of your people.
God one last time. And we're going to do it a cappella because we don't want the music to drown out our voices. Hallelujah. We love the music, but God wants to hear the praise coming from within. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shout to the Lord on the earth. Forever the same. Hallelujah. Do I have a witness this morning of the greatness of our God? Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. How great is our God. How great is his name. He's the greatest one. Forever the same. He rolled back the water.
of that same song that says he came walking on the water when I was sinking in sin he threw out the lifeboat and he took me in yes Jesus is awesome hallelujah we are grateful this morning that Jesus came looking for us amen the songwriter says he took uh, from from you know he came from heaven to earth to show us the way from the earth to the cross our debt to pay so Jesus was the one who came looking for us and I'm glad he found us amen he found me hallelujah this morning we want to welcome you all to the church of the open Bible greater Portmore those of you who are coming for the very first time online or here in the sanctuary we want to to recognize you this morning. Are there any persons visiting with us for the very first time? Can we see a show of hands this morning? Anybody coming to us for the very first time? Oh yes, could you stand for me, my brother? Stand and be recognized. We welcome you to Church of the Open Bible, Greater Portmore. And I would like to tell you that this ends the search for a godly church. Amen. This ends the search for a godly church, for a friendly church. And we pray and trust that you will enjoy the service and that you will come again. Amen. Do we have anybody? You having a birthday today? Or in the course of last week? Oh, yes. Come on. Come on. Give it up for little Levy. Oh, Brother Thompson. Sister Gordon. Oh yes, happy birthday. Oh yes, Sister O, Sister Erskine. Everybody born in March? Where are you all marching to? Where are you marching to? <laughs> oh, we have a lot of March people this morning. Oh yes, we're going to march with them. Amen? I'm going to sing a nice birthday song, Sister Hector, Sister... Erskine, Little Levy, Sister Gordon, Brother Thompson. I'm not recognizing the face in the back. Let's wave that hand for us. Oh yes, we want to wish you a happy birthday. And today we celebrate with you. Come on, Mr. Musician, take it away. Happy birthday, this is your day. Age is just a number. Won't you Your day Happy birthday To you And you And you Happy birthday Come on, give them a hand Hallelujah We wish you a happy birthday Put the person who is sitting next to that person Just give them a nice hug And uh, just a nice embrace Yes, I see the husband and wife hugging, right? Very good. Just give Sister Gordon a nice hug. Uh-huh. Brother Thompson, Sister Hector. We want to wish you a happy birthday. Are there any persons celebrating a wedding anniversary today? Or the course of last week? Are we? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Huh. Wow. Come, come, come on down, my dear sister. Come on down. Come on down. They are going to show us and give us a nice waltz. Come on, come on down, come on, go, go, go meet your bride. 
No matter how long you've been married, she's still your bride. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. We want to wish them a happy anniversary. How many years? 17? Seven years of wedding bliss. Oh yes. We want to wish you a very happy anniversary. And we pray that God will continue to bless you. Come on, Mr. Musician, give them a nice song as they was and show us how they've been doing it in private. We have not been seeing it. Come on. Show up. Come, 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 come on. Come on. Show us how it's been done in private. Show it to us in public now. We want to celebrate with you. Long and last in love, come on. Oh yes, love. very good. You don't look like him can do anything, you know. Him is as stiff as a, as a rock. Anyways, we congratulate you and we celebrate with you. And we trust that the Lord will continue to bless your marriage bless your union as you go forward amen just look at the person who sit next to you and give them a nice smile show them those 32 or where they have been yes smile smile a while and give your face a rest raise your hand to the one who loves you best and shake hands with those nearby and greet them with a smile. Smile a while, smile a while, and give your face a rest. Raise your hands to the one who loves you best. To worship in the beauty of holiness. Praise God. Praise God. In the book of Zephaniah, chapter 3, and verse 17, it reads thus The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty, he will save. He will rejoice over thee with joy. He will rest in his love. He will joy over thee with singing. The Lord is rejoicing over us with singing when we have returned from our ways unto him. This morning, I want to invite the church to please stand as we do our hoping, opening hymn. Oh, worship the king. Praise and worship. Um, Sister Monica, Sister Deaconess Monica Williams, I'm just going to ask you to prepare yourself to be next, and then we, that will be followed by the scripture reading by Brother Merrick Wong. Praise the Lord. Blessed good morning to one and all. Oh, worship the king, all glorious above. Bless the name of the Lord. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Oh, worship the King, all glorious above. Oh, gratefully sing His wonderful love. Or shield and defender, the ancient of days. Pavilion in splendor and curtain. 
Thank you, praise team. Deaconess Monica Williamson will be coming now with the announcements. Good morning, God's wonderful people. Great to be in the house of the Lord one more time, and we give God thanks and praise. So for the announcements this morning, and first we're going to start with the one of the beliefs of the Open Bible Standard Church is of Jamaica. And this morning, it's on evangelism. We believe that as long as conditions indicate that the coming of Jesus Christ draweth nigh, his redeemed children should endeavor to spread the gospel to every person. We also believe that soul winning is the chief mission of the church up on the earth. And the scripture references are 2 Timothy 4, verse 1 to 2, and Ephesians 5, verse 16. The announcement. Um, the Open Bible Standard Churches of Jamaica has embarked on a 21 days of prayer and fasting, and that continues to March 29 under the theme, Prevailing Prayer, Pray Without Ceasing, or Push Until Something Happens. So please remember to pray for the family, the association, and our country. And this morning, Elder Brown had also prayed for the association. Um, also, the young people, I'm not sure if it's just the young people of our church, but they are also embarking on a 31 days of prayer and fasting. And you know, the more we pray, the more power, and the more the Lord will hear from us. He said we should pray, and he will hear and answer and shows great and mighty things. So today, it's day 17th of their prayer and fasting, and their, the focus is on discernment. Amen? Amen. So we all need discernment from the Lord Jesus Christ and from his word so that we will not be swept by every wind of doctrine. Amen, church? Okay. So the reminders, because most of what I have this morning, they are still reminders. There are announcements for those who are probably here for the first time. So we will be having Sunday school, discipleship class for children and young people and all persons who desire baptism. 
there is also a membership class for those who are desirous of becoming a member of this church. Um, Bible study will be on Tuesday at 8 p.m. via the Zoom platform. And also this evening at 4.30 p.m., the evangelism team will meet at church, will meet here for visitation in the community and all are invited to join. I, I'm, I'm praying that a lot of persons will be able to go out this evening. On Thursday, the church meets for Mountain Movers prayer meeting, prayer and fasting service, and it begins at 11 a.m. However, if you are unable to come, you may leave your prayer request in the box, which is right here on the platform, or you may stick it in the wall at the back of the sink of the sanctuary, nearly say sanctuary. <laughs> um, okay, so I did mention before that youth meetings are held every Friday at 7 p.m. except fifth Fridays, and they are really having some interesting times now. And remember to pray for young people, please, please, please. The ladies' ministry, which is the woman of work, is asking that you continue to bring your coins. If you do not need them, please take the coins. And you may place it in a yellow jar, a yellow bottle, which is somewhere located. Oh, it's located at the back outside. Yes. And also remember to take your plastic bottles for the recycling project. And also, it is also for their fundraising efforts. Gospel concert. Don't buy the ticket yet. Anyway, <laughs> tickets are on sale for two thousand dollars. And gospel concert is when? Friday? Not this Friday. When? Oh, Good Friday. Yes, Good Friday. Gospel concert. It begins at six p.m. And it's $2,000 for adults, $500 for children. And the main artists will be Goddy Goddy and Dwight Ferrari. He has an interesting name. The Voices of Praise is doing audition for new members. So please contact Sister Daisy Messam or Brother Tyrone Smith for further details. And Brother Tyrone is not here this morning. He's somewhere out of town on a mission. And we are also encouraging you to remember to give to the Love Barrel. And the Love Barrel is out every Sunday morning. It is somewhere at the back. And it's very difficult for a lot of persons to take something to place in the barrel so that it can be distributed to those who are in need. And we really want to thank all those who have been giving to this effort. And we also want to thank you for giving your tithes and offerings, your love gifts. And we're asking if you do not have the physical cash to give, you may give online. Our banking information is the National Commercial Bank the University branch, and the account number is 401-094-431. And we are also asking that you call the church office or send an email when you have done so. The email, it's greaterportmoreob at gmail.com. The telephone numbers for the office is 502-5059 or 622-3444, and the office is open Tuesdays and Thursdays at 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., and Fridays from 8.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Please remember to pray for those who are sick, those who are hurting, those who are discouraged, and those who are on the verge of giving up. Prayer changes things. May God bless you and have an overcoming day. Thank you, Deaconess Monica Williamson. And just to let the church be aware that um, Sister McDonald Roberts has most recently 
lost her husband. So we're just going to ask the church to keep her and the family in our prayers. And for those that are coming in late, um, we just want to know that, I'll let you know that um, you might not see Reverend MacDonald today. He's on another assignment um, somewhere in the rural area. So we'll continue to keep him in our prayers. Remember, this is Mission Sunday. And also, one of the biggest and largest gathering for mission um, will be taking place on the 20th of April this year. And it, the theme is Fun in the Sun. And I just want to invite those volunteers who want to be just volunteer your service for counselors. Um, you know, you will, they will be having an altar call, not like an altar call where the people come down, but they will, you will just go into the stand or the bleachers and just to take information from those who are willing to, after they hear the word, willing to believe and accept Jesus Christ. So we still have, um, all of these cards were issued out. We put like about five people name on it and you continue to pray for them, invite them to come out for the fun in the sun. And the, for the volunteers, I'd encourage you to give Sister Andrean Morris, today being Mission Sunday. Sister Andrean, could you just wave? Where are you? Or any other leaders of the church, and, um, and you can be a part of um, this counseling body of believers. At this time, we are going to take this morning um, scripture reading, which is taken from Hosea chapter 4, reading from verse 1 to 3, and Isaiah chapter 65, reading from verse, verses 6 and 7. That's Hosea chapter 4, reading from verse 1 to 3, and Isaiah chapter 65, reading... 65? Isaiah 55, Isaiah 55, reading from verses 6 to 7, and this will be done by our own brother, Merrick Wong. Please stand when you have found it. Good morning. Pleasant good morning to one and all this morning. Scripture readings are take, will be taken from. First one is um, Isaiah 55, and we'll read verse 5 and 6. But that's not the one I'm going to start with. I'm going to start with Hosea, chapter 4, Hosea, chapter 4, and I'll read verse 1 to 3. So please mark Isaiah and then move over to Hosea. I'm reading from the NIV. <clears throat> Are we all ready? Yeah. I'll read and please follow. <clears throat> it's Hosea chapter 4, verses 1 to 3. Hear the word of the Lord, you Israelites, because the Lord has a charge to bring against you who live in the land. There is no faithfulness, no love, no acknowledgement of God in the land. There is only cursing, lying, and murder, stealing, and adultery. They break all bounds. And bloodshed follows bloodshed. Verse 3, because of this, the land mourns, and all who live in it waste away. The beasts of the field, and the birds of the air, and the fish of the sea are dying. Isaiah 55, 5, oh, I'm sorry, 6 and 7, and it reads, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he's near. 
Let the wicked forsake his way and the evil man his thoughts. Let him burn to the Lord. Let him turn to the Lord, I'm sorry, and he will have mercy on him. And to our God, for he will freely pardon. I'll read seven again. Let the wicked forsake his way and the evil man his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord and he will have mercy on him and to our God for he will freely pardon. These are portions of God's holy word and we honor it by saying, Speak to God. At this time, let me invite the voices of praise to come and to minister to our heart. Put your hands together as they come. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Bless the Lord. <laughs> okay, pleasant good morning to all again. We want to bless the Lord this morning for He's faithful to the very end. He will be faithful to the very end. We want to thank him for his grace, his unmerited favor, and that he is with us all day long. So as we stand to minister this morning, may your hearts be blessed. In Jesus' name, amen. Yeah. 
all day long. Have you been with Jesus all day long? If you've been with Jesus all day long, if you have been faithful to Jesus as he has been faithful to you, put your hands together for the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Church, the foundation has been laid. It's time for the word. The Bible tells us that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. God is here this morning in the spirit. In Romans 10 and verse 14 and 17, in verse 14 it says, How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? We have a preacher here this morning. But in verse 17 it says, So then, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. We have someone this morning that will be bringing the word of the Lord this morning. She's been saved since her youth, over 40 years. She's been serving the Lord diligently and faithfully. She's a graduate of JOBI, now College of Theological and Interdisciplinary Studies, CITES. She's a graduate of the Michael University. Teacher, guidance counselor, she also serves as an elder of Greater Portmore Open Bible Church. She's one of our Sunday school assistant, super, assistant superintendent and also a Sunday school teacher. But most of all, she loves the Lord. She's always making herself available to be used by him, to preach, to teach, to witness. And this morning, as she wear many different coats, the one that she's wearing this morning is to come and declare, thus said the Lord. Church, may I present to you the woman of God this morning to bring unto you the word of the Lord of your heart, open of your ears, incline, I bring to you Ella Marlene Williams. Put your hands together for her as she comes. Shall we praise the Lord? Shall we praise the Lord? Shall we give the Lord a hand this morning? Hallelujah. God is good. All the time, God is good. He is my Savior. He is my Lord. He is my friend. He is my bosom body. Yes. Yes. I love the Lord with all my heart. He has been good to me. He has been good, although I have not been so good. But he is good. He is good to me. It's good to see you, Sister Donna. It's good to see you. God is good. Sister Donna was hospitalized for a couple of days, eh? But she's here today. We're going to pray for her at the end of the service. Amen? Amen. God is the good God. I love the Lord with all my heart. And today, I want to share with you what I think the Lord has deposited into my spirit. I will share with you from the passage that was read earlier on two passages, Hosea chapter 4, 1 to 3, and Isaiah chapter 55, 6 to 7. Hallelujah. What a wonderful Savior. All day long, I've been with Jesus. All day long, my lips of utter praise. All day long, I've been with Jesus. Many of us in here can't say that. 
because you have been with someone else. But all day long, I have been with Jesus. Father, we come this morning in the incomparable name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. I thank you, God, for this time in your house. We pray, O oh God, this morning that you will come among us and speak into our spirit. Touch us, Lord. Minister to our hearts. O oh God, I ask that you will speak for me. Speak to me. Speak through me. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer, break thou the bread of life, O oh Lord, to us. As thou didst break the loaves beside the sea, beyond the sacred page, we seek thee, Lord. And our spirit pants for thee, O oh living word. Come among us and bless us. In Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Let us return to the Lord. Can we say that? Let us return to the Lord. Let us return to the Lord. That's what I want to speak to us today about. There's a song I heard years ago. I'm not, I'm not going to sing all, um, say all of it. I'll just repeat a few words from this song that I heard. One of our favorite gem went home to be with the Lord over 20 years ago, Jean Denham. And this was one of her favorite songs. And when I went to the Kingston church, this song grabbed the whole of me. And I just cannot let it go. I can't sing like Jean. I play the guitar a little, you know, I've lost my touch. So I've stopped practicing. But it says, I have returned to the God of my childhood, to the same simple faith as a child I once knew. Like the prodigal son, I longed for my loved ones, for the comfort of home and the God I outgrew. I have returned to the God of my childhood, Bethlehem's babe, the prophet Messiah. He's Jesus to me, eternal deity. Praise his name. I have returned. I have returned to the God of my mother with unfailing faith for the child of her heart. She said, bring them up in the way that you, that you want them. Thank when they are grown, they'll never depart. Thank God when they are grown, they'll never depart. I have returned to the God of my mother. I learned at her, free, uh, at her knee, he's the lily of the valley. Sweet Jesus to me, eternal deity. Praise his name. I have returned. In the book of Hosea, chapter 4, we see judgment against the sins of the people in verse 1 to 5. We see in chapter, in, in, in chapter 4, verse, verse 6 to 11, idolatry is reproved and Judah is reproved as well. In Hosea chapter 4, Verse 1 to 5, Hosea is reproved for immorality as well as idolatry. There was no truth, mercy, or knowledge of God in the land. It was full of murders. First, second, first, second Kings chapter 21, verse 16. Therefore, calamities were near which would, which, which, which would cause them to, to you know, to, you know, to, you know, to be judged by God. And we see that our sins have separated us from God. As a family, as a church, as a nation, 
as a community, we have fallen short of the glory of God. We have gone far from walking with God. And although we come to worship from time to time, we have really wondered. The rationale for Hosea's call to attention was because the Lord has a case against the inhabitants of the land. It was a charge against them. It was a contention, a conflict against these people. This was the reason he commissioned Hosea to speak to the people. But God this morning, God has spoken to us in his word, through his word. And he has asked us to return. Because as a country, we have wandered far from God. As a nation, we have wandered from the very heart of God. We see here in the first, in, in Hosea chapter 4 and verse 1, the first point is that they have departed from the Lord in their worship. The second point is that they have wandered from the Lord in their words. And the third point is that they have wandered from the Lord in their works. So in their worship, they have wandered. In their words, they have wandered. And in their works, they have wandered. Come with me this morning. Hosea seemed to have minced no words. He spoke bluntly. He said, no truth is in the land. And we see here that truth grows out of the fact that, that you know, if, if we are not right with God, then there is no truth in our hearts. Amen? There is no mercy in the land, he said. And we know that mercy flows from our merciful God. And if we don't have mercy, it means that we have no God. God's people have forsaken him. We have no time for him. Because let me tell us, we come to church, we come to fellowship, but many of us, our hearts are far away. We are far away. The lesser things have become more adorable. The things that have no value have become the things that we love and adore. The things that seem not so important are the things that we embrace. And God is not pleased because we have departed from him in our worship. In the way we worship God, we have departed from him. We have wandered from the things of God. I was watching something a couple days ago and I saw a pastor in a church in America and his message was kicking football. They were playing football in the church. It seemed laughable, but it's not a joke. I saw another one kicking the Bible to the other. And that was their time of worshiping God. You see, when we come before God and we have nothing to offer, we do nonsense. And as I sat and as I watched those two ministers, did those nonsense in the church, I said they had nothing to offer the people of God. And so they were kicking football and the people were clapping. They have itching ears. They heard what they want to hear. We have wandered from the Lord in our worship. What are some of the warning signs? That we are departing. Let's look closely this morning. What are some warning signs? Many times, you know, those of you who have cars and, and, and all stuff, you, you, you know, there are warning signs to tell you that something is wrong. Amen? There are some warning signs telling us that we are departing from the faith. 
worship of any kind or style. We drop out of regular attendance. And some people are still blaming COVID. I'm sorry for COVID, you know. I wish I could find COVID and really say, and apologize to COVID. I want to apologize to COVID because we're still blaming COVID. COVID is gone. Long gone. And Mark, we have to be careful too because there are little pockets here and there. But we have to stop blaming COVID. We have wandered from God because we have dropped out of our regular attendance. And yet we say we worship God. We are living our faith in isolation. We, we, you know, we stay at home and we, and, and, and we say I can, I can watch the service online. I told my pastor a couple of weeks ago, I said, Rev, we need to cut down that clothesline, you know. Hmm. Take down that clothesline. Take down the clothesline. Because even the clothespins have become so dry in the sun. They are rotten and dry. Can't hang up anything anymore. But we are still online. Catching up. Online. My God, it's a tragedy. It's a tragedy. When as people of God, we don't, you know, we wander from him in our worship. We drop out and we think it's, 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 it's nothing. There is no desire for God. There is no hunger for God. The Bible says that if we are hungry and thirst for righteousness, we shall be filled. We must be hungry for God and show that you are hungry. When you watch a person who is hungry, uh, you know, I saw a man a couple weeks ago. He was in a wheelchair, but he was not really crippled. He was in the wheelchair and saw a man took a snake, a fake snake, and threw it over him. And he got up and he ran. He wasn't hungry. He was pretending to be hungry. Hungry and thirst. For the things of God, hungry for God, wanting more of God, wanting to receive more of God. We have drifted away in dangerous territory. We have wandered so far that we cannot even see God. We can't hear his voice. We have wandered deep. Oh, the songwriter says, I've wandered far away from God. But now I'm coming home. The heart of sin, no the path of sin, no long of trod. Now I'm coming home. He says, I've wasted many a precious years. We have wasted so many years doing the things that God does not want we have dropped out we have no desire for God the word of God has no place in our hearts but yet we worship they have wandered they have departed from God in their worship hear what Hosea says he says hear the word of the Lord you Israelite because the Lord has a charge to bring against you who live in the land there is no faithfulness he said there is no faithfulness, no love. And that's what has happened. We have become so unfaithful to God. We have drifted in dangerous territory. The word of God has fallen flat. When God's word no longer feeds us, it's because we have moved. God's word no longer feeds us. And so many... You know, so many times when, because we have wandered so far from God, Sister Jaws, you hear them say, Him never deep. Him never deep. Him never come deep. It's because we have moved. We can't, the word of God, no matter how simple the word is, it should have been able to touch us and to move us and to make us better. We have wandered far from God. We have wandered far from the Lord. The Lord of God is living and active. The word moves in to transform us into the image of Christ. Hallelujah. When it no longer has that effect, we have drifted outside of the reach of God's instruction. When God's word can't reach us, no matter how the pastor preach, no matter how they preach, the word of God can't reach us. Why? Because we have moved away. We have drifted far from our God, out of reach. 
out of reach. We need to return. We need to return. When there is no hunger for God, we can feel it. We can know it. There are times when I would lie at home and I said, God, I feel so far. I feel so far from you. And I would lock my door, shut out everybody on my belly and I would cry out to my God because I want to be near to him the song says I want to be close to you I want to feel your heartbeat he said pull me so close till I feel your heartbeat and don't let me wander away from your presence pull me close pull me close wrapped up in our world we have pushed God of our, out of our thoughts. And it's a dangerous place to be. It's a dangerous place to be when we have pushed God out of our thoughts, out of our family. And we embrace the other things. When you talk to some people about coming to God, I, I spoke to a young man a couple of weeks ago right here at church. Young guy, promising. And I spoke to him about the Lord. He said, let me have to live my life, you know. I don't live no life yet. But let me say to us that God's come for God comes for individual. God comes for groups of people, but He comes for individual. And you may think that you're waiting for that right time when the rapture comes or when or you know you, you know you, you know you know when you're in a deathbed. But God comes for individual. He has become an afterthought. This reveals the distant we have drifted from our God and I think of Peter in the book of Luke chapter 22 put that up for me Luke chapter 22 let us read Luke chapter 22 verse 54 to 62 we're gonna see some things right now open your Bibles those of you have your Bibles your your you know your iPod your phone whatever turn to Luke chapter 22 and we see Peter then they took him and led him and brought him into the high priest and Peter followed afar off say following afar off say that following afar off and Peter followed afar off 56 6, 56 what does that say and when they had kindled a fire in the midst of the hall and were set down together Peter sat down among them let's pause Peter had a problem with distant that was his problem distant one of his problem he followed the Lord afar off Jesus was on his way to the cross but Peter followed afar off that's what some of us are doing. We are coming. We are here. We are there. We are dressed up. We are going to church. But we are following afar off. Because we have to remember what's happening at home. What's going on somewhere else. Amen. Peter followed afar off. He had a problem with this stand in verse 54. Peter had a problem with discernment. With discernment. In, 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 in 56, the Bible says, this, uh, but, but a certain maid, no, no, go back for me. Verse 65, verse 66, yes, verse 55. And when they had kindled a fire in the midst of the hall and were set down together, Peter sat among them. Who were those people? Those were the enemy. Those were the enemies. Peter was sitting down with the enemies right there. He had a problem with discernment. Deaconess Black. He could not even discern that he was sitting among those who were enemies of the cross of Christ. We have to be very careful who we sit amongst. We have to be very careful who we hang out with. We have to be careful the persons that we link up with because we could be sitting with the enemy. Peter sat down among them. 
he had a problem with distant. He had a problem with discernment. In verse 56, verse 56, but a certain maid beheld him as he sat by the fire and earnestly looked upon him and said, this man was also with him. And he denied him saying, woman, I know him not. And after a while, another saw him and said, Thou art also of them. And Peter said, Man, I am not. And about the space of one hour, after another confidently affirmed, saying, Of a truth, this fellow also was with him, for he is the Galilean. And Peter said, Man, I know not what thou art saying. And immediately, he yet spoke, the cock crew. Peter not only had a problem with distant, he not only had a problem with discernment, he had a problem with denial. You see, when we hang out with the wrong people, we hang out with the wrong group, we link up with the wrong kind of crowd, and we are listening to them, and we are nodding our head, yeah, we are Christian, but you, you smile at the joke and you take a sip and you hold a spliff and you say, you know, I don't really like it. And they pop it in your face and you say, what are you doing? Don't do that. After a while, we begin to deny that we know the Lord. After a while, we begin, that, we, we, we begin to deny that we know Christ. We have to be careful. We have to follow him. We have to follow him close. Close to thee, the song says. Close to thee. Lord, I'll follow close to thee. We want to follow close to the Lord. Peter had a problem with distant. A problem with discernment. A problem with denial and he also had a problem with departing departed from the Lord what did he do he went out and cursed he went out of the presence of everyone and he began to curse and swear and that's the problem the people in Hosea was having. They were cursing and swearing. They were doing things. That is why we follow God afar off in our worship. We don't worship him the way we ought to worship him. We don't look to God the way we ought to look to him. But this morning I want to say to us, we can't follow from a distance. We have to have discernment. We're not supposed to deny him. And we're not supposed to depart from him. That's what he wants for us. To follow him closely. To follow close. Close to him. Close to Jesus. Hallelujah. God is saying to Israel, your worship has become formalistic. And that's what he's saying to us today. You're singing a few songs and jumping to the beat. It's not going to cut it. We have to be at the place. We have to worship God. The Bible says that they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. For he seeketh such to worship him in spirit and in truth. He speaks to us the same way today. We therefore need to return to him. He will have mercy and he will abundantly pardon. Hallelujah. 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 Not only have they departed from the Lord God in their worship, but in verse 2, they have departed from him in their words. Listen to what the Bible says. This is only, there is only cursing, lying, murder, stealing, adultery. They break all bounds and bloodshed follow bloodshed. This is how they were worshiping God. They were departing from the Lord in their words. The things that they were saying was not measuring up to God, measuring up to what God wants. The Bible says that we should, you know, our conversation should be in heaven. Our conversation should be seasoned with salt. We should speak the word of wisdom. We should speak God's word. So when those who hear will listen. 
listen to us and we say, my God, there goes a child of God. There goes a child of God. But they have departed from the Lord in their worship. They have departed from the Lord in their words. There was only swearing. If we look at Matthew 33, verse 37. I want us to read something here right now. St. Matthew chapter 33. And we're going to read together. Matthew 33. Matthew 23, sorry. St. Matthew 23, verse, verse 33. Matthew chapter 12, sorry. Verse 33 to 37, sorry. Matthew chapter 12, verse 33 to 37. Hear what the Bible says. Hear what the Word says. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. The Bible says, make a tree good, and its fruit will be good. Or make a tree bad, and its fruit will be bad. For a tree is recognized by its fruit. You brood of vipers, how can you who are evil say anything good? For out of, for out of, for out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speak. The good man brings good things out of the good stores of his of, of his heart and the evil man brings evil things out of the evil store of his heart but i will tell you that men will have to give account on the day of judgment for every careless word that comes out of the mouth whatever word we speak god will we stand before god and we will give account of the words that come out of our mouth so as people of god we need to use our lips the bible says out of how can out of the same mouth come blessing and cursing the bible says these things are not to be so brethren we curse god with the lip you know we will curse men with our lip and then we praise God with the same lips these words should not be coming out of our mouth but we should be praising God and giving God glory because whatever is mentioned whatever comes out of the heart the Bible says out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speak whatever you speak from the heart is what you really want to say so you can't take it back you can't say something and you say, oh, me take it back. Me never mean it. Me never mean to say it. It's gone already. It's gone already. And somebody said, word is wind. It's not true. Words are powerful. So the people mentioned in Hosea chapter 4, they made profanity their practice. They practiced profanity. And as you walk the streets of our country, Jamaica, you hear where young people, young girls, young boys, speaking all kinds of profanity from their mouth. And you wonder, which home? Who grew you? I asked a young man. I said, where, where, you know, who grew you? Where were you born? Why are you speaking that way? And it's a miss and the culture. And the culture, you know, miss. I saw we talk. Yes, I saw we talk. But let me say to us, and many of our young Christians, they copy that kind of behavior. Oh, they copy. And that is why we encourage you to read the word of God, to study God's word, to have God's word hidden in your heart. The song, you know, the Bible says, Thy word in Psalm 119, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I I might not sin against you you want to not sin against the Lord read the word study the word practice to speak God's word on a daily basis when you wake up in the morning you speak God's word at lunchtime speak God's word in the afternoon speak God's word at nighttime speak God's word and when I can't speak it I turn on the audio my brother I turn it on and I fall asleep and I wake up hearing the word of God speaking into my spirit that's how you know that you're on the right path with God I'm, I'm not awake to speak it but somebody there 
speaking it into my spirit so when I wake up hallelujah I remember I have a little nephew oh he was about three years old and the mother used to put a radio at his ears and he would sing the song rise and be healed in the name of Jesus and he would go to sleep and one day I woke up and I saw a little baby in his crib singing rise and be healed in the name of Jesus three years old what make it for a child of God who knows God who come to God but oh we have wandered so far away from him that the things of this world has become our guide the things of this world has become our bosom body the things of this world has become the things that we embrace and we see nothing wrong with doing certain things I heard a Christian the other day, I went to somewhere and the Christian said, oh, you know, she and I went to Sting. You know, we, you know, we went to Sting. And they were talking about this good Christian lady. Nice. Nah, well, I'm not criticizing the woman. But she went to Sting. Yes. And she, she was at Sting. Maybe she really was there doing God's work. Let's say that. Give them the benefit of the doubt. But as Christians, you're not supposed to go and sting, you know. Because sting will sting you. Sting has a sting in its mouth that spews it out. And when those dirty lyrics begin to speak into your spirit and you go home, you can't get rid of them. They're playing over in your head. And that's why some of us have wandered so far. We can't worship. We can't sing the songs of Zion. When we come and say, all hail the power of Jesus' name. We stand like statues. We don't understand because we only want to hear about rumping shop. And I heard that rumping shop will be coming out. And some people are saying that, oh, he's my favorite and I love him. My God. God, can you imagine what's going to happen to our children when Mr. Rumping Shop come back to Rump in this our island Jamaica we have to take charge of our home take charge of our children and ensure that they walk with God <laughs> tell your children speak into their spirit the word of God and if you see them wandering away take the hook like the shepherd the good shepherd will do and pull them back and that's what our parents used to do us when they see us wandering a little bit of wonder and my sister wouldn't make up the little dress and she put it up here so and my father come and he would have to inspect our clothes every sunday morning and said now fool for clothes this and she said it's my one and he said give it to me and he would tear it to pieces to find something else to wear oh my god we're not here to preach what you wear but i'm telling you we have to put values in our children's heart put things in their hearts that they will not depart from the truth they will not wander from the way of god when you put god in them the bible says they will not depart from the truth put god in them put god in them and don't be afraid to tell them I'm coming down I'm coming down we find that when when we lie you know that's what they were doing they were lying they were speaking all profanities one of the marks of decadence Colossians chapter 3 verse 8 says put filthy communication out of your mouth let your conversation be in heaven lying should not be be, 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 be taken lightly the Bible says that you belong to your father I think it's um, St. John chapter 8 verse 44 it says ye are of your father the devil in the King James version but in this version it says that you belong to your father the devil and you want to carry out your father's desire he was a murderer from the beginning not holding to the truth for there is no truth in him when he speak he speaketh a lie because he's the father of lies and there are some of us as Christians we lie so easily we lie easily but my God my God 
My God, let this not be the hallmark of this church. Let us speak the truth. Oh, hallelujah. David says, thou desirest truth in the inward part. He said, Lord God, oh, my lips have wandered. I have spoken evil. I have done lie. But if the prophet did not go to him and speak to him, he would still be walking free. Let us eliminate those things from our heart. Eliminate them from our heart. Not only have they wandered from God in their, in their worship, but they have wandered from God in their words, the things that they say. Go tell your neighbors, I'm not there. Tell the man, I'm not at home. And some kids say, Mama says she's not there. <laughs> And we think it's cute. And we are teaching our children to lie. We are teaching them to speak profane language. Yes? But they have departed from the Lord in their works. In verse 2, we see, hallelujah, we see where the Bible says in Hosea chapter 4. With the chapter 4 and verse 2, we continue. It says, there is only cursing and lying and murder, stealing and adultery. They speak out blank and bloodshed follow bloodshed. They have departed from the Lord in their works. And when we come and we backbite and speak evil against our brothers and sisters, that's killing them. The Bible says, I'm not a murderer, but the Bible says you backbite. Ah, then I hope you are a frock stay so. You just see where she wear come at church last week. You just see how her shoes look. You just see her hairstyle. You just see where she have on. Lord, my sister, then she can't do better. That's killing your brother. Killing your sister. And if we continue to do that, the Bible says they are a murderer. <laughs> we don't know what kind of weapon may they take and do that. I, I'm not a murderer, but the tongue, the Bible speaks of the tongue. Set on the pinnacle of hell. The tongue is a weapon. And it cuts. It damages. Damage the brother. Damage the sister. And you wonder why she not come back. Something you said. Something you spoke. Something you spoke against the person. You hear say. Somebody was at my house. Here you hear, you know. You, know, you never see the person. You hear that somebody was at my house. And you said, they you know, here say, you, you know, say somebody ain't done that. Elder Williams, yeah. You, 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 you hear? No, come tell me more. Juicy beef. Ready to eat juicy beef, juicy patty, juicy hot pot patty. And we sit and we talk. But the Bible says this morning, believers, this morning is our, is our mission Sunday. The mission that we send out today is to be careful of how we speak and what we hear and how we talk about each other. Oh my God, my mother said, if you have nothing good to say, say nothing at all. So we need to speak good of each other. Speak well. Speak well of each other. We have departed in our works. Killing. Stealing. And if we look in Exodus 20, verse 13 and 14, we see the killing and the stealing and the committing of adultery. All the above, they are forbidden by scriptures, right? The murder rate in Jamaica has surpassed 200 since the beginning of 2024. We are only in the third month, in the second week, going to the third week, and yet, 
over 200 people have been murdered they have been murdered there we don't need to be murdering anybody in church this is a hospital this is a place we come where people are healed where people are touched where people are to be lifted up when you come to church we don't need to hear who did say what and who did say and me say 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 we need to be talking the things of God speaking the word of God so people will get life Jesus says I come to give life and give life abundantly we speak life into your hearts today we speak life into your home today we speak life into our church life into your job life abundant life that's why we speak that's why we speak and if you hear say me say come and tell me say me you hear I am that teachable sister Erskins I am teachable you hear that I say come and face me eyeball me and come and let us trash it out don't go and say you know hear say say and then it spreads oh my goodness I heard a story of a man who said something about somebody and it spread like wildfire elder it spread so much and all the entire community had the man's back and the pastor called him in one day and he said I'm going to give you something I'm going to give you some papers and he tore the papers up as fine as could be I said I want you to go down the road you see where the sea is right down there he said scatter all of them and he went and scattered them then the pastor he went back and said I did it pastor he said alright give one more thing for me go back and pick up every piece and bring them to me and he went back and he said pastor can't find them the pastor, that's what happened that's what you did you put something in the hearts of people and they spread it all around can't be taken back so believers in Christ on this mission Sunday our mission is to spread the good news our mission is to spread hope our mission is to spread joy our mission is to spread peace and love among the brethren so when we walk on the road everybody will know that it says and I know you are Christian by your love by your love because we love the brethren that's what Jesus wants that's what Jesus teaches that's what he wants us to do as people of God to spread the word of hope hallelujah and life into the hearts of people so men and women will come to know Jesus whom to know right it's life eternal hope for the hopeless hope our works must not be that of spreading run to shed innocent blood the Bible speak of it that oh my goodness the tail bearer run up and down scattering things in greater Portmore scattering things until it reached Kingston scattering things until it reached all over Jamaica we scatter that's not our work our work as people of God must preach and teach the good news of hope and redemption and joy in the Holy Ghost tell them that Jesus loves them tell them that Jesus loves them Jesus loves me the song says this I know for the Bible tells me so that Jesus loves me he who dies heaven's gate are open wide he will wash away your sin let his little child come in so we are not to use that God's call to return to him and I'm closing God's call to return to him throughout scripture is a personal one he says return to me write the scripture down Isaiah Nehemiah chapter 1 verse 9 Nehemiah chapter 1 if he return to me obey my command he says I will bring you back to the place for the Thompson he said if you return just return to me we are not innocent of doing evil and doing bad but he says if you return Isaiah 55 6 to 7 says seek the Lord while he may be found he says, call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his ways and the unrighteous man his thoughts. 
and let him return unto the Lord for he is our God and he will abundantly pardon he will pardon you he will set you free if you return Jeremiah 4 verse 1 if thou will return and put away the abomination thou shalt not be removed hallelujah these are words of comfort if we return to god we have wandered we have strayed we have journeyed out of his territory we have gone into all kind of little dark path like those scammers and those who are doing evil like the different gangs that they set up and they lurk in corners we as Christians we have wandered we have journeyed we have done evil but God says if you return Joel chapter 2 verse 12 return to me with all your hearts with fasting hey, with weeping and with mourning he says return to me Come unto me, all ye that are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me, Jesus says, for I am meek and lowly. Hallelujah. And my burden is light. He wants us to return to him. He wants us to come to him. He wants us to just, let me tell you something. Jesus is near, you know, and hell is on fire. Hell is on fire. I heard a song says, There's a fire down there. I mean, no one go down there. Sister Messam. He said, Me here, say one fire, a bone down there. And me no one go down there. But if we drift away from God, if we turn, if we shift our focus and begin to look at the things of the world and begin to cause them to become so supple in our hand that we can't we can't reject the things of the world we have to taste a little bit of the world and some of us come in the church and we jump out back and go taste a little bit and come back again the bible says that if we continue to do that we will go one of the time and we will not come back he says if thou will return and put away the abomination thou shall not be moved come to god come back to jesus return to god it's not just coming for service or finding religion or portraying good habits nice but it's to come to him personally to come to the Lord and God has brought you here today it's not by chance because this may be my last message this may be your last hearing when i walk out of here today it's no guarantee you'll see me next week sister andrea there's no guarantee that you will see me again so when i live for christ i live as if this is my last day this is my last minute this is my last minute i saw a man preaching i was watching one of those televangelists and he was preaching and right there, around the pulpit, he died. Right there. This is how I live. I live that one of these days, I will go home. Could be now, tomorrow, next week. But live today as if it's your last day. Hallelujah. Sister Jody, I don't know if you know the song, I Have Returned. You know that song, I have returned to the God of my father. I'm going to ask the priest team to come. They, sister, sister Giles, you must can sing it. It's a long time you're there at church. It's a long time you're there at Kingston Church. I have returned. I don't know if the, if the group can find it. I have returned to the God of my childhood. Okay, I'm going to chuck it and we're going to sing it. If, if you can find it, I think it's there somewhere on YouTube. If you can track it, we're going to sing, I have returned to the God of my childhood. Amen. I have returned to the God of my childhood. 
to the God of my childhood, to the same simple faith, to the same simple faith. As a child, I once knew. As a child, I once knew. Like the prodigal son. Like a prodigal son. My loved ones. I long for my loved ones. Go ahead. Praise the Lord. I have returned. Sing that song with us. I have returned to the God of my childhood. Bethlehem's babe, Bethlehem's babe, the prophet Messiah, the prophet Messiah, is Jesus to me, Jesus to me, eternal day. I have returned to the God of my mother with unfailing faith. With unfailing faith for the child of my heart. For the child of my heart. He said, bring them on. Valley, he's the lily of the valley. He's Jesus to me. Oh Lord, eternal day. Praise his name. I have returned. I have returned. Just heard a shout, just heard a shout from the angels in glory. Praising the Lord, praising the Lord. A child has come home, a child has come home. heard the word of God 
I we're not here to beg anyone. I, I learned a long time ago not to beg. <laughs> I learned a long time not to beg. But Jesus is inviting you today. If you have heard the word, maybe you once knew the Lord. You once walked with him. You once had a relationship with him. We want to pray with you today. Can I see a hand? Those who don't know Jesus and you want us to pray with you and pray for you. Can we see a hand today? You want to return to the God of your mother. Some people can't sing about the God of their mother because their mother never knew God. <laughs> but you may can sing about your father. He knew the Lord. Or the God of your uncle. Or the God of your sister. You want to come to Christ today. I want to invite you to come today. Take that step of faith. We want to pray with you. And if there's no one, I'm going to ask the congregation to stand today. And I'm going to ask you to hold the hand of the person who is sitting or standing next to you. I'm going to ask you all to stand as the praise team hum that song, I have returned to the God of my father, the God of my mother, Bethlehem's babe, the prophet Messiah. I have returned to the Yahweh of Judah, the God that Israel served. We want to invite you to come to that God today. And if you can't come, just, 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 just hold the person's hand that you're standing next to. Maybe you could whisper if you don't know the person. Ask the person, do you know Jesus? Would you like me to walk you up today? Would you like me to take you up to, 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 to be prayed for today? We are going to pray today. I'm going to ask that we all join hands. And as we pray for each other, Pray that God will keep us, will keep us, will keep us close to him, will draw us close to him, that we don't wander in our worship, that we don't wander in our works, that we don't wander in our words, but that we come to Christ and that we stay close, close to him, close to him. I have returned. Just pray for the person who is sitting next or standing next to you. Of my father, hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Bethlehem's babe, the prophet Messiah, the prophet Messiah. I can hear a shout. Is Jesus to me? Jesus to me, eternal day. come today Lord we ask that you will hold us hold us close close to your heartbeat and don't let us wander away we come near to you Lord in worship we come near to you Lord in the way we work in the way we speak we come near and we ask Lord that you will hold us hold us Hold us, hold us, hold us, and don't let us wander away. We thank you, Lord God, for coming to us today. We pray, Lord, for those who are sick among us. We bring Sister Megan to you, Lord. We ask, oh great God, that as she lined at hospital today, that you will minister to her right now in the mighty name of Jesus. We ask, oh God, brethren, just open your mouths and pray. She's in the hospital system. 
Dr. Megan Swaby is in the hospital. Let's pray right now. Pray for Brother Taxter who is in the hospital as well. He was readmitted, I think it was yesterday or Friday. Let us pray for, the, pray, pray for our brothers and sisters. Oh God, we ask that you will visit them right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, we ask great God that oh, you will touch them, Lord. Your Bible, the Bible says that you were wounded for our transgressions. You were bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon you and with your stripes. We are healed. We pray for that young girl, Lord, who has stage four cancer. Right now, Lord God, we ask in the name of Jesus. We ask in the name of Jesus that your wounded hand will touch right now for that daughter, Lord. Oh, down with stage four cancer. There is nothing too hard for you to do. Oh, God Almighty, for you were wounded for our transgression. You raised Lazarus from the dead. The man was sick for 38 years. He was crippled for 38 years. And you healed him. And today is no difference, Lord. We bring her to you right now. And we ask in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that you will touch her, God. That you will heal her body in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We ask, Lord God, that you'll come alongside that family that you will bear them up in your arms oh God in Jesus precious name we pray for sister Swaby oh God in the mighty name of Jesus and for all those sick among us Lord for sister Matthew and her father in Jesus precious name we ask oh God that you will remember them right now remember your people right now oh God almighty bring in the oil and wine Pour in the oil and wine. Oh God Almighty, the healing virtue. We leave you today, Lord, and reach out to them. Right now, right now, right now. In the name of Jesus. We pray, oh God, that you'll bear us up. Lift us up. Oh God, cause that we'll be heaven ready. We'll be rapture ready. We'll be ready, Lord. Because any moment now, any time now, you can return. Oh Oh God, we return today, Lord. We return to the God of our mother. We return to the God of our fathers. We return to the Yahweh of Judah. We return to the God of our childhood. We return, Lord. And we say, Lord, as we return, hold us at the place. Shepherd of our soul. Guide us. And take us, Lord. To that place where we will never return to the weak and beggarly elements. But cause, oh God, we will stand firm in the faith. We will walk strong. We will walk worthy of the vocation wherewith we are called. We will stand in the promises of God. We will stand. We will stand and be counted. We will stand. We will stand up for Jesus. We will stand up until that final day when we stand around the throne of God. God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus. Oh God, we pray for Sister Donna, Lord. We ask you to continue to let your healing virtue flow through her, Lord. Flow through, flow through, Lord. The many sicknesses, Lord. We pray for our brothers and our sisters who are ailing. We can't call them all by name, but you know them this morning. You know them, Lord. Reach out your hand. Reach out and touch. Oh God, and as Jesus is passing by, reach out and touch him this morning in jesus name we bless you lord we thank you god we give our hearts again to you lord we recommit our lives to you lord we surrender again we surrender again lord we surrender, we surrender, we surrender, Lord, to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, we surrender. Greater Portmore, surrender. We surrender, we surrender to the Lordship of Jesus. It is done. It is done. It is done. Is done. We walk out of here free. We walk home free today because Jesus has touched us.
Jesus has dealt with us. We praise you in Jesus' name. I'm going to call our Deaconess Black to come and just make that announcement again of our concert. And then I'll ask our brother, Elder Brown, to close and, and to give the benediction. May God bless you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. May God bless you. Thank you, Lord. For the offering. Sorry. How could I forget? <laughs> Pastor would not forgive me. Pastor would not forgive me. So I'm going to ask you to take, to take an offering out. Yes. So while, while, while the ushers are coming to us this morning for the morning tithes and offering, I'm going to ask Deaconess to come as we just remind you of our big day that's coming up. Amen. Take your offerings out. Morning, everyone. Good morning. Okay, let me just give you some update on the concert first of all i want to ask you to ensure that the funds are being collected once you're giving out tickets remember to collect the funds or persons have committed to paying you so we want you to do that we also want to remind you to invite your family your friends your neighbors your co-worker everybody because the concert is going to be hot because when we say militant praise we say, I am a warrior. I am a conqueror. We say, all the conqueror wave your hands in this place, man. Yeah, overcomer in the name of the Lord. I also want to remind you that refreshment will be on sale. Look here. Do not cook any dinner on that day. We have your dinner over there and we have all niceties so please turn down the pot eat a slice of bun and cheese and then you come out and eat your dinner over there a lot of things on the menu and the food good 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 so so please come out and support so let us pray i was asked to bless the offering father can you hold up your offering please father in the name of jesus christ we thank you for health and strength we thank you for the privilege to work and to give back a portion to you father we pray in the name of jesus that you will bless it lord jesus that not only will your kingdom be furthered but that we will benefit as well lord even now we pray for those persons who do not have any to give this morning that you will make a way you'll provide for them that they will be able to give at another time father we just bless you and we thank you in Jesus' name amen we are going up we're going up together In the name of the Lord, of the Lord we are going up, up, up. We're, We're going.